green stuff world has released something of a contender to contrast and speed paints. And since I actually quite like green stuff world products for the most part, I wanted to try some out. So I added one to my order. Just the one though, because I bought this myself, which means I can say whatever I want about it. This is my green stuff world dipping ink review. Because I only have the one color, which I'll explain at the end why that's the case, I only got the one, it means instead of doing a color comparison, I'm going to do a battery of tests to see many of the different ways it might be useful to me, using some simple bases from the Battle Yak Patreon. To prepare for the test, I'm just going to use a gray primer which is only coincidentally the Green Stuff World Grey Primer. It's the stuff I've been using for a while and I just happen to really like it for priming. So a little bonus review for you there. I don't have any speed paint from Army Painter, but I do have a pot of the OG Contrast that started the whole hype train. But I also want to test it against a standard GW watch as well. Though I know these have changed recently as well, but it's really more about the coverage differences that I'm concerned about. So splitting my base into three, I'll start with just the Argrax Earthshade, applied pretty heavily. Same goes for the GW Wildwood Contrast. Then I'll add the dipping ink I did get, which is the Papyrus Dip Color. Unlike the other two, this one comes in a dropper bottle, so I'm putting it onto a palette first. Now that it's dry, we can get a good look at how opaque it is versus contrast paint. Now some of this might have to do with the colors of course, I don't have a very specific one-to-one -one comparison. But from this example, I'd say that it has the staining ability of the contrast, but at about half the coverage. Still more coverage though than a standard wash, so a few layers could give the more accepted contrast effect. Of note though, spreading it around on the base seemed much more simple to do, and it just generally has better flow. So as a contrast, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5. I think it'll work great over Zenithils to colorize, but I don't think it'll be as strong to paint with, at least this color. One thing I like about the idea of contrast style paints is that they should be able to be thinned down into washes quite easily, so it can do double duty of being quick for quick colors, but also complementary to more advanced painting techniques. So for the test, I'm just going to do controlled dilutions across a plain base again, starting with three drops of the contrast, then one, two, and three drops of water. I'm sure a thinner would be much better for this, but I want to see how it stands up on its own to simple water dilution. Then get this painted in bands along the base. I still have the first one for comparison for just the pure contrast from the bottle, and to me it seems like even just a single drop of water is enough to thin its consistency, but not actually dilute the colors out too much. And the more added has a bit of a downward curve. Three drops didn't seem to change the opacity by three levels, and I don't see any coffee staining. So for thinning ability and getting a standard wash, I'm giving it a five out of five, exactly as I hoped that it could be thinned based on application. Time to get a little colorful. One thing I like to do with my primer layers sometimes is to add color so that it's not such a giant leap from primer to base coat. But in this case, I want to see how the dipping ink goes over a light desaturated color and see what kind of staining effect it has to them. So to prepare the base for this, I did some of the darker versions of primary colors into the gray primer and just sprayed different parts of the base with it. For the actual application of the dipping ink, I'm going in straight with it and spreading it out evenly with a paintbrush and let it settle and dry. So nothing fancy for this one, just a test of the undercolors and how they look. So the final result here is something interesting. I think it actually did a better job creating dark versus light contrast over the colors. The recesses are a much deeper shade than on a standard primer base coat. It also did some funky things with the colors, as it's not mixing, but still letting those undercolors show. We got some interesting tones. The blue especially. It's not green, but actually looks like a tinted blue. So I'm going to rate this application a 4 out of 5. I love the effect, but it did miss pooling in some of the cracks, so it is a little uneven, which is probably even my fault.
I've done bright colors, but what about standard color base coats? How does this stuff work as just a shading wash in a base shade highlight system? I'll prepare this base with just a whole whack of the same base colors, but blending between them with a brush. This should get me some pretty dark colors, so we'll see how much darker the dip makes them. The process for getting it on the base will be the same as the last time, but this time thinned a bit because I only want to see what it looks like as a wash for a shade before doing highlight layers. Presumably, this would also be done with matching colors, but a bit of a hue shift never hurt a shade. So I was quite surprised by this one because I expected it to work like it did over the light colors, but instead, it seems to have little to no effect. Other than on the yellow and the red, it doesn't much seem to have affected the other hues at all, and didn't make anything in the cracks that much darker either. So as a wash over vibrant colors or dark base coats, I'm only giving it a 2 out of 5, because I'm going to account for the colors not matching, or it'd be a 1 in this case. The last thing I really want from a contrast like paint is the ability to do some really nice color glazes over textures and colors. So to prepare for this one, I'm actually going to do a whole process to this base, starting with a darker tone of my gray that I'm going to be using as a base coat, then I'll use the base color to layer on top of each tile. From there, I'll add a bit of white to start the texturing process, highlighting around each brick first, and then filling in some of the parts of it and stippling to hide the harsh layer line. With the final addition of white, I'll do the same thing again, but this time from a single direction. In this case, I want the light to be hitting the skull on the base here from the front, so that's going to be the direction of my light. So I just highlight the edge facing that side, and also the sculpted scratches, and adding a few more surface abrasion scratches of my own. Usually I prefer to do my glazing with my airbrush, which is where I expect the dipping ink to actually work a bit better for this purpose, but I do want to try it with a brush, loading my brush with it and then wicking it away on a tissue paper so that it's only damp in my brush. Then I'll use this to colorize the surface of a few of these bricks in an attempt at a circular gradient. For the airbrush, I want something simple, so I'm not adding any thinner, medium, or other dilutant. It's just straight from the bottle. I want to see how well it sprays, but also how strong or subtle it is. Normally for something like this, you want to layer up slowly in controlled, transparent layers, but sometimes I'm lazy and just want to get it done quick. So my hope is these would help with that, with little to no fussing with dilutants. And this is the result. I'm actually quite excited by this because hot damn, even with a brush that was a really, really easy glaze to apply and stained the bricks exactly as I was hoping they would. It sprayed nicely through the airbrush with all of that transparency I expected with no thinning and no spidering. This is one of the things I'd love to do the most to really push the look of my models by adding overlaying colors on already painted surfaces. And if I can just grab a color, put it into my airbrush and go with no mixing needed, well that's a 5 out of 5. Now I mentioned at the start that I only got one of these for cost reasons, but it's not in the way that you might think. The bottles themselves have a whopping 60 milliliters, or about 2 ounces, compared to a contrast which only has 18 milliliters, or 0.6 ounces. One bottle of the dipping ink is 5.75 euros. I'm using euros because Green Stuff World is in Spain, so I figure it would just be the best to do the comparison with the local currency since other prices on their site are just conversions from that. And GW prices their things based on location. And a pot of contrast goes for 6.3 euros. Which when we math things, the dipping ink comes out to about 0.1 euros per milliliter while the contrast is 0.35 euros per milliliter. So price-wise, contrast is obviously the more expensive one, and the dipping inks are a great bargain by comparison. However, 600 milliliters can be a lot by weight, and they have a set of 24 colors. Unfortunately, shipping is usually done by weight, so the more added to the packaging, the more that costs to ship. So when I did add all of them to my cart, they would come out to 140 euros without a sale. But then shipping added another 100 euros to that. So 
yeah, unfortunately it was just more affordable for me to try just one than all of them. However, in the days since I've made my order, they seem to have solved the shipping a bit better, at least to Canada, and now it's only 34 euros, which seems a lot more reasonable. So would I suggest pulling the trigger on the shopping cart? Well, if your goal is cheap contrast, these are close, but I wouldn't say they're going to paint your armies for you in one coat the same way a contrast might, maybe a couple coats. They don't just seem as opaque, at least in the case of this one I used. That said, I think they'd be a great tool for more advanced applications when looking for something quick to add to a model. If you start with base coat colors and then Xenophil, I think these will give some outstanding results over top or as a dip, like suggested by the name, to just give an already base coated model an overall wash, though that will probably have the best effect with close colors. And for my application as an easy color glaze, well that would have me sold just for convenience alone. So decide what it is you want them to be doing for you, and whether they'll fit into your style. But definitely think of them as their own thing and not a contrast replacement though very close to a contrast. And at the very least, they don't reactivate once dry. Please subscribe if you like this video and check the link in the description to my Discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.